This week, um, we are try to use to try try to create a multi part linear uh regression model. Uh, so we are going to establish a multi part linear regression model uh by using the same uh data set we used last week, and also we are going to try to uh, use generalized uh linear regression models uh, where we are going to apply um L two and also our L one penalties so that we want to reduce the overfit issues. Uh, so first, let's open the uh, right miner, um, and let's create a new folder called um, lab4. Uh, we are going to use the same data, so you can either download the data from the uh, GitHub again and also import the data, or you can just simply drag the data here um, from lab3. Okay, uh, so let's see what uh, the data that we have. Uh, so here we have the price. Uh, last week we used area to predict price. So because there's a, uh, in that case, there is only one independent variable. So that is called simple linear regression model. This week we are going to use four independent variables. So we are going to use bedroom, number of bedroom, number of bathroom. Um, lot size and also area to predict the price. Okay, so we're going to use those four variables. Um, so you can always create visualizations, say if you have a, a linear relationship, and also later on, once you have um, the results and you can plot the errors, see if the errors follow a normal distribution. Okay, uh, so let's go back to our design view. So because we're going to use those four independent variable plus one dependent variable. So we need to select the attribute. So you can either, you can see here, drag select attribute, or you can just type select attributes. So let's drag select attributes uh, to our process. And next in the parameters, we are going to select a subset. We are going to, we are going to use the price the area, number of the bathroom, and also number of the bedroom, and also the lot size. Okay, so we are going to use those five attributes or the five features. And the next, we are going to tell a rocket miner that um, the price is our target or the price is a label. So we can use the operator called set rule here, or we can search the set rules from operators and we um, make sure they stick to our process and let's say we want the price to be the label and for the others they can just be the regular attributes and now let's run the process so now you can see the price uh, is highlighted because that is a label and now we have the bedroom bathroom, lot of size, and also area. And we still have a very small sample size, so we have 41 examples. Okay, so just as a, a demo purposes. And next, let's go back to the design view, and we want to split the data. So we want to use uh, part for the uh, training and also part for the testing. So let's uh, search split. Okay, split data. Actually, you can also try to split uh, validation. Okay, but in um, in this week lab, let's just try to split data. Here we want, uh, let's try use uh, automatic. And we want again, 70% go for training and also 30% go for testing. Okay. So the first one uh, normally will be the 70%, so that is for training, and also 30% uh, rows go for testing. Uh, next, we are going to bring our model. So the model is called uh, linear regression model. Actually, it is the same model. Um, okay, so it is the same model. Um, here we are going to 
feature selection, we don't need feature selection. So let's just see the default uh, linear regression models. And we don't want to eliminate those collinear features. OK, uh, so we don't want to eliminate the collinear features. Um, so let's look at the model first. OK, so now we have the model based on the training data. So we have coefficient for the number of bedroom, bathroom, lot size, and also area. And remember that the tolerance are all above 0.4. So collinearity is not an issue. Um, in terms of the p-values, we see that area and also um, lot size are less than 0 0.05. So they are significantly. Uh, statistically significant and also uh, bathrooms are also less than 0 0.05 so that's also significant um, and if we look at the standard coefficient we can see that the lot size actually is the most important feature uh, because when the lot size increased by one standard deviation the price increased by 0 0.090 0.911 standard deviation. Okay, uh, so in this case, lot size is the most important uh, feature. Uh, if we go to the description, and we can see that if we are going to make predictions, so the price equals this value times number of the bedrooms, plus this value times number of bathrooms, plus this value times lot size, plus this value times area, and minus this one. So we have a negative um, alpha. So the lot size has the smallest coefficient. However, it is the most important one because the standard coefficient is the biggest. OK, so now we have our model. Uh, so let's look at our accuracy. So we can apply the model. You can also drag apply here, but just in case you cannot find apply model so we can search from operators apply the model so you can see bit by default the model we are passed to the model and we pass the uh, the training data to the as unlabeled and next let's see we calculate the performance so if we type performance and make sure that we're using the performance for regression models. OK, so performance. And we tap the predicted result to performance. And we pass the performance to the result window. And we want the squared correlation. So let's check that one. OK, so now let's see the performance on the training data. So let's, so this here performance on training data. OK, and we can see R square is very high. So if you remember that this R square is far, is far way higher than uh, the simple linear regression, because as long as we bring more uh, uh, features or variables into the uh, regression models, so linear regression models, R square will increase. So in this case, because we have four variables, so R square is higher than just we use area only. OK, so that the performance on the training. Um, so if you remember that, we also want to test the performance on the testing data. So that is this testing data. So uh, let's also do that. So uh, first, let's copy those operators. We apply the data, and this will be the data for the testing. OK. And we pass the testing data to apply model. And now we need to bring uh, the model again, so the model to the apply mode as well. So. Let's bring the model to apply the model for the testing. So now they're asking, so do you want 
disconnect from this operator or do you want to make a copy of the result of the operator? So let's say we want to make a copy. Okay. Uh, so, so that's a model look like. Again, so we have the data with split data part for training. So we have this regression model and the part for testing. So we calculate the performance on training and also with the C model apply on the testing data and we calculate that one on testing. So let's bring the result here. Okay, so we don't want to see the output of the model. So we want to see the performance on training and also performance on testing. So now let's run the model. So on the testing, the R square is lower. On the training, the R square is higher. So uh, to be honest, I would say that the, the model is doing a decent job. So because the, on the testing data, it's it's still OK. But um, let's, <laughs> let's just pretend that we are not happy with this one. So let's say that we still consider this uh, overfitting issue. OK. So if we consider this overfit issue, so we can introduce the regularization, so which is called generalized model, so generalized regression model. So let's replace this model to a generalized regression model. So what you can do is that you can just search generalized regression model here and drag operator here, and also delete this one and also replace with a with the added operator. Or an easy way is that we can just simply right click this model and we we replace this operator. And we go to modeling. And I think that is a predictive modeling. Um, And that's if we go to functions, and we can we can see general generalized linear model. Okay, generalized linear model. So now you can see the new operator has um, perfectly fit with our existing process. Uh, by the way, let's save our process. So let's see. Okay, so let's say go to lab four and let's save our current process. So that is lab four folder. So let's just call it lab four. Okay, so now the current process has been saved. Uh, next, so if we check the generalized linear model, so here you can see we have different parameters. Um, so we can ignore uh, those advanced parameters. And let's uncheck standard, standardize so, so that we can easily see the result uh, and stand the result. And here you can see, do we want to use regularization? And then we say yes. And if you click uh, this explain, explanation, so you can see if you want to use, you should check that one. And let's say yes. Um, and next, the lambda uh, and also alpha. So lambda, if you check the explanations, is the amount of the penalty, if you remember in the lecture. So lambda is normally the penalty. So if the lambda is bigger, the penalty will be bigger. Alpha. So if not, again, if you check this explanation, you can see alpha is a way that you can determine do you want the lasso or do you want reach or do you want l1 or do you want l2 so if the value of alpha is one then that is lasso that is l1 regularization if the value is zero it is reach so that is l2 uh, so there are also advanced settings that you can choose the value between zero and one so Right now, let's just see we want um, the reach uh, first. So let's choose um, zero for now. Okay. And for lambda, so let's just give you a random number. So let's say 100. Okay. And now if we run this model, 
And you can see for the testing, the accuracy is 0.735. And for the training, if you remember that the R square dropped a little bit. Okay, the R square dropped a little bit. Uh, so if you increase the penalty, so for example, now we gave it um, 100,000. Okay, so that's just an, a random number. Now if you run it, we can see the performance on the testing is almost the same. The performance on the training is still uh, it's the lower, but it's still greater than on the performance on the testing. So R square is still higher on the training data. Okay, and now you can see, okay, so you can try and use different uh, lambdas. And they also gave you an option that you can choose lambda search. Okay, so you can choose the lambda search. So, however, here, let's just try to do um, let's try to use let's uh, let the right miner to do the to do the search. So let's ask right miner to try different lambdas. Okay, so automatically. So let's just give a range. Say, I want you starting from very small to a very big lambda. So we ask right miner to try that, and that we can do that by using a loop. Okay, so if we search loop, and here you can see you can loop a lot of different stuff. So you can loop just a simple loop, you can loop values, attributes, and also parameters. Okay, so in this case, we're going to loop the parameters. We're going to loop the, the lambda parameter in this generalized linear regression model. So let's drag the loop here. Okay, so let's drag the loop here and let's make sure we select all the parameters after set rule. So we are going to let the recommender to repeat every step after the set rule operator. So let's select everything after the set rule operator and let's just cut. So if you go to editor and you can see cut. Or you can use Control X on Windows. And next, if you double click, so you'll go to inside of this loop parameter operator. And inside this operator, you go to editor and you can see paste. Or you can use Control V. Okay, so here you can use the Control V. And next, Let's link the output and also uh, input. So we say, okay, the, the everything that fit to this loop operator will be the input for the split data. And whatever we have from this performance will be the output. Okay, so we have two output here. And then next, let's go to outside. So let's click this process and say, okay, so the the, the data will be the inside of the loop operator and we connect output to our result window. Okay, so we connect the output to our result window. Okay, uh, so now we have the loop operator. So basically what does that mean is that we have the data, we select attribute, we set rows, and we pass the data to this loop operator. And inside this loop operator, so it will run multiple times based on the settings we define here. So every time it will split the data, create uh, the linear regression models, and based on lambda that we defined, apply the model for training and also for the testing, and also report the result. Okay, so that's the idea of the using loop operator. Um, so here you see, you see that we have an explanation mark, that is because we haven't defined the possible combinations of the uh, parameters that we want to iterate. So here, let's go to inside of this loop operator. So there are several things that we need to change. Uh, so first, we are not going to log the performance because we are going to log the performance manually. Secondly, let's say we want to edit the parameters. 
So this is where you want to define. Okay, so for each iterations, how do you want to change the variables or the parameters? So in our case, we want to change the lambda. Remember that we want to try to use different penalties. And that parameter is belong to this generalized linear model. So we select this one. And generalized linear model has multiple parameters. So here we're going to use lambda. And then for lambda, so what is the minimum value and also what is the maximum value? So let's say we want minimum value to be zero. And the maximum value, uh, let's say we want uh, a very big value. And let's say we want uh, 1,000 step, probably. Um, and also, we don't want a linear, so probably let's say we want the logarithmic. OK. And let's start. Let's actually give it the minimum value to be this one. OK. Uh, so now you can see we start from a very small value and we will increase uh, very faster to a very big value. Okay. Just 1000 steps. Okay. And now you can see how the penalty will change. All right. Uh, so now let me click OK. Next, so remember that in a split data, so every time we see, okay, we want automatic uh, split the data. So to make sure that every time we are using the same data for training and also for testing, because we want to see the effect of the lambda. So let's say we give it a very user local uh, seed, and you can give it any number that you want. So just make sure that we want to give it a local random seed. So by giving a local random seed, every time you will, you will split data, that make sure that the same uh, rows go to training and the same rows go to testing. By doing that, we will be able to see that uh, the, the effect of the lambda. Okay. So next, we want to record the performance for each iteration. So let's just search the log. Okay, so that is a log operator. So we see that for each iteration, we want to log the performance for training and also performance for testing. And we want to pass that result out. Okay, and let's double click. Uh, let's add it to the list. So here we see that uh, performance for uh, training, and that is a value from uh, the performance of training, where it is a, a value of the R squared. So we we're only interested in R squared squared correlation. And we add another entry, so that is P of testing. And that is performance of testing, which is also a value. And the value is also squared correlation. And lastly, we also want to see the penalty. So that is lambda. And that is actually, actually from the generalized linear model operator and that is a parameter and that is lambda okay now we apply that and let's go back to the process okay so everything looks like great okay uh, so that is the loop parameters which is ready uh, one more thing that we we are also interested in is that we, we also want to see the coefficients of those models. So let's also go to inside of those loop parameters. So instead of log those performance, also lambdas, 
Let's also report the performance of those models. Okay, so we make the model, uh, connect the model to that output. And next, let's go outside the process. And now you can see we have new output and we make that connection. Okay, um, and also you can uh, enable the parallel execution because um, that will run uh, so many times. So if your computer or if your laptop is powerful enough and you can check this one, so that will save you some time. Okay, so now let's run it. So this may take a few minutes to finish the calculation. Okay, uh, so it's almost done. Okay, uh, so here uh, we have the models. Okay, and so if you check the first model, you can see that those are the models with, with uh, smaller penalties or uh, even no penalties. We can see the coefficient are still very high, so this is 19,000. Uh, if we go to the other models, now we can see that the coefficient is are smaller. So because uh, the lower, uh, the penalty will be bigger so that um, the rich uh, model will try to uh, reduce the size of those uh, coefficients so that you can see coefficient are now become smaller. And now you can see they can become even more smaller. And if you go to find it, you can see all the coefficients are now becoming smaller and smaller. So next, let's go to log. So log are the parameters that we recorded, so the performance and also the lambda. So you can see initially, um, the training is higher than the testing because the lambda is very small. Uh, however, if you go to bottom, and you can see when the lambda become bigger, uh, both training and also testing are become smaller. Okay, so how can we find out the sweet point where the training uh, um, performance on training is similar to the testing? So that is we can go to the visualization. So let's create a chart. In this case, let's use the scatter multiple. Uh, for the x, let's choose the lambda, and also for the y, let's choose testing and also training together. So let's um, use control key and also choose training and also testing. And because we use log scale, so here let's also check the log scale. Okay, uh, so here you can see that when the penalty is um, about zero, and you can see the training performance is higher on the testing. When the penalty is something around 0.1, the training is still greater than the testing, but after we increase the penalty, so you can see it's the performance on the training has is not decreasing. And when the penalty is greater than 10,000, so about here, so now we reach the point where the penalty on the training is similar as the penalty on the testing. Okay, so that's great. So I would use uh, the penalty of this one in the model so that I might have sacrificed the performance on the training, but I have simplified the model that the performance on the testing is the same as the training. So that next time when I bring new data to the model and make predictions, I will be more confident that the model will do a similar job on the new data. Okay, so that's the idea that why we need um, a regular uh, realization. And now if we go back to the loop parameters and also here, let's say, Right now we are using alpha equals zero, so that means we are using the um, L2, so reach regression. So if we choose that one to one, so we are using a lasso, and let's see how it look like. So here now we are using the lasso model, and let's run it. 
Okay, uh, so it's almost over. Okay, great. Um, so you have to be patient. So uh, by using LISO, you can see initially with uh, smaller penalties. So the coefficients are very, very big. And uh, if you go to middle, uh, now you can see that the coefficient becomes smaller. And also for bedroom, bathrooms, their coefficient becomes zero. And uh, if you go to the others, uh, okay, so finally that we just have the inter intercept. Okay, so that's the difference between lasso and also uh, reach. Okay, reach tend to uh, minimize the square sum of the coefficient, and the lasso tend to push the coefficient of less important features to be zero. Okay, and now if we go to the log, and, and also let's just go to the chart directly and we will see a same pattern here okay uh, slightly different but you can see that uh, when the penalty is something around zero so training data has better performance than the testing data um and however so when we reach this point so that is um okay so i cannot Get the value but anyway so when we reach this point we can see that uh, we do have the point where the training data has the same performance as the testing data okay uh, so now that is the uh, place where i would use for the new data so i have a simplified model and that can give me the decent um, performance and also reliable performance okay so uh, for this lab you can just um, remember that you can export those images in your lab report. Okay, uh, and also remember that you, you need to provide screenshot for your um, process. So before we close, let's make sure that we save our process.